Howdy, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining me today in this uh, live webinar on a very important subject in the beginning of the summer, where the summer hot days are just reaching us here in uh, Southern Texas and Southern California. We still are a little bit cloudy, but definitely the temperature is uh, warming up. And I'm sure quite soon in June we and July, in August, we're going to have the full summer heat. So now is the time to make changes to your lifestyle and to your diet in particular, so you don't have common health conditions that result from excess exposure to excess heat. Um, so that's why the title of our webinar today is Summer Guidelines According to Ayurveda. Uh, and according to Ayurveda, and I think it's a very, uh, accurate, uh, useful advice that we need to modify our diet during the years, during the spring, we have a spring harvest during the summer, we have certain summer foods, you know, in the fall and winter, we have certain winter harvest. Of course, if you're gardening, you notice that, you know, there's certain vegetables and fruits that come at certain times a year. And those are the vegetables and fruits that we should be consuming. But unfortunately, we can go to the supermarket and just buy anything. So we've kind of no, we're no longer eating, you know, based on the seasonal fruits and vegetables that we should be having, which would naturally keep us more in balance. So what is in balance? Well, in the summertime, uh, we're going to get a lot more cases of heat or pitta related, you know, pitta dosha, pitta Rudy, high pitta, high pitta condition, particularly for those people who are a more pitta dominant, uh, have do dosha or prakriti or even a pitta vikriti, have high pitta. Uh, these type of people can have a much greater probability of these type of pitta aggravated type of health conditions, acid reflux, heartburn acidity, inflammation in the colon. In fact, we've been getting already a lot more cases of inflammatory colon conditions already, burning in the urine, stinging in the urine, uh, hot and sweaty at night and can't uh, sleep, even if you're not having a hot flash still. Um, and even the air conditioner's on, you know, the body accum can accumulate the heat during the day, make you hot at night, affect your sleep adversely. Uh, and even your head can become too hot and then you become hot headed and that means you're going to become angry, more irritable, more angry. Well, a lot of people, if you go, if anybody if just walk out in the hot sun, don't take any water with you and no hat and you start getting hot and you, you'll start getting more short tempered and irritable. Uh, so if you're out working in the sun or even just walking around in the parking lots, you know, going back and forth from your AC to the supermarket, just that heat alone, too much of it, particularly in the middle of the day, can increase the pitta in your body. And this can lead to many of these health conditions I have, even frontal lobe headaches, not tension headaches from the back, but frontal lobe headaches around the eyes where you have to go in a room, turn off the lights, you know, and darken the room and rest, these type of even intense migraine headaches, irritability, rashes, hives, heartburn. I hope you got the point. Now, you may not think these are your big problems, but uh, still, you may, you may experience some of these health issues in the summer. But those people who have a history of heartburn, a history of rosacea, a history of redness, a history of muscle inflammation and tenderness, uh, a, a history of loose stools, our inflammation in the colon. Well, then you really have to be careful during the summer months because that condition may come right back based on the fact that you've expo overexposed yourself to the summer heat and not allowed your, uh, uh, not balanced this heat energy from the sun. Because that's what we're talking about, the heat energy from the sun. And of course, in the summertime, we are closer to the sun and we have more longer days so there's more exposure to the sun and so this pitta dosha is coming from the sun 
So the sun has a big factor. Now, sun has many health benefits. The lack of sunlight, of course, we now know creates vitamin D deficiency, which leads to low immunity, degenerative bones, poor calcium formation, et cetera. And even can make us more predisposition to cancer by not having sufficient uh, sunlight. I want to use the word sunlight instead of vitamin D because most vitamin D is synthetic and uh, it doesn't do the job as well as real vitamin C made or metabolized from exposure to the sun on your skin. So the sun is very important. The sun is essential for healthy human beings. Now we think only the plants need sun, but humans do need too. So lack of sunlight, as I mentioned, low immunity, low bone density, and even a more greater position to any health many health conditions, including uh, cancer. So if you're indoors, you're not exposing you all to the sun, then you really have no choice but to take some supplements. But that's another uh, subject. What we're talking about today is overexposure to the sun and the heat in the summer months. If you work outside or you're walking in parking lots or you're just, you know, even at night, it can be too hot. So the whole environment becomes too warm during the summer because of the exposure, longer exposure to the sun. And so we have to counter that and take actions in our life that help us to have greater resistance to this increase in heat or pitta which can lead to many of those health problems that I just mentioned. So what can we do? Well, we can follow the seasonal diet, which is what we should be following. If we were just farmers living out there on the land, we would be eating uh, certain cooling foods during the summer. And uh, we probably wouldn't be going out in the middle of the day. We'd probably be taking a siesta in the middle of the day and going back out in the evening when the sun went down. If we were living really in harmony with the, the nature we would do like many people did for thousands of years is take a big break in the middle of the day, take a little rest, take a little siesta, and then come back out later in the evening when the sun went down and it was cooler. Now that's because they didn't have air conditioners. So they had to be a little, you know, they, they had to live and adjust accordingly, but we can change our lifestyle habits to some degree and we can change our diet to a great degree. So let's talk about what we don't want to consume too much of in the summer months to avoid the increase of the pitta dosha, which I mentioned can create excess body heat, inflammation, muscle tenderness, burning stools, burning urine, painful, painful joints, burning eyes, headaches, migraines, acid reflux. I think I've said that list a few times. So here's the things we want to avoid. We want to avoid hot, spicy food, hot foods. That means garlic, onions, chili pepper, oh, that's first to go. Now, of course, if you're a really cold person, you're just, just a really cold person, even in the summertime, you're still cold. Well, you probably wouldn't have to make as many changes. If Vata Prakriti, for example, they're cold, light, and dry, so they don't really mind the summer heat, particularly if it's not in the Southwest where it's dry, but like in the Southeast where it's warm and humid. So that dry, cold Vata property type person will like warm and humid weather and they have to be more careful in the winter where it's cold and dry uh so there are some people that don't need to make a big adjustment to their diet or be as careful but for those people who have dominant pitta dosha and have a tendency to get warm and hot and irritable then they have to be more careful so no hot spicy food for those people now if you're like I said, if you're cold, well, you can still have some ginger, some turmeric, you know, some cooked onions, but you still want to not have the hot spices, the raw garlic, and also not too much sour fruit, like uh, grapefruit, lemon, lime. Lime is better than lemon. It's not as sour. Grapefruit is the most sour, and, and sour always increases body heat. Uh, ask some woman who's been having hot flash after she has some grapefruit juice or even just orange juice and they heat right up so um and so and salty so basically no hot no sour no salty salty also is increasing the pitta dosha here we have our first little kitten 
has decided to come visit us. Let's put him up here. There we go. You're on the webinar now. And uh, and what we want to increase is a sweet, cool, and astringent taste. Sweet. What's sweet taste? We don't mean candy bars and cookies. We mean sweet like sweet fruits. What's cooling? Melons, cantaloupe, right? Honeydew, watermelon, and even light vegetables, leafy greens, cilantro, asparagus, green beans, you know, uh, and, and even ghee and butter is sweet and raw milk. That's what gets me through the hot Texan days is coconut water, uh, which I did bring some here, some coconut water, very cooling, and milk. Milk is very cooling. So I do do my fair share of milk during the summer months. And when it's a spring and it's still cool outside, I have to be careful with too much milk because it creates mucus. But in the summer, when it's scorching hot, oh, cool milk out of the fridge is just heavenly. And it's very cooling. Not goat milk. Goat milk is a little warming. But cow milk is sweet and cooling. And so is ghee and so on butter. And you need a little bit more fat you know, in the diet to protect the skin and keep the skin cool. So those are sweet tastes. Even rice is considered sweet in Ayurveda. Most carbs are sweet. Um, and then a cooling, there's many cooling fruits like coca, coconut water, mango, wa mango juice, mangoes, cucumber water. We mentioned the sweet and cooling often go together. And in fact, if we look at our, uh, our, uh, our sponsor here, uh, Herb Man Teas, we have many products that are made for the summer. Here's Herb Man Teas product from HerbManTeas.com. Sweet digestive tea. See, now this is made to drink in the summer. First ingredient is spearmint. Spearmint is more cooling than peppermint. Fennel, one of the most cooling of all spices. A little cumin in there for your digestion. Coriander, probably the most... Uh, uh, a second most cooling herb, little cinnamon and cardamom. So this is very sweet, very cooling. And it says helps reduce gas and bloating without warm spices to avoid acidity, heartburn, and GERD. So those people who get heartburn and GERD and they have gas and bloating, they can't do ginger, which is a typical, you know, and, and warming spices, which is typically what helps gas and bloating. But if you have heartburn or acidity, you can't do those. So you have this tea. And of course, in the summer, when it's hot, you drink this tea. I, I drink this tea uh, more than a couple cups a day during the summer months. And another great product by Herman Teas, which, you know, many of these I made for myself, Sweet Energy Tea. Again, another cooling formula uh, because I do have some other teas called uh, Morning Energy Tea, Brain and Energy Tea, but they do have a little ginger in them. So that's fine in the summer, winter time, but in the summer, I want something cooling. So I do sweet energy tea, sweet, gentle energy without the coffee jitters because coffee is really inflammatory and heating and really not recommended in the summer as well. Using sweet and cooling herbs and spices, no sweetener needed. Uh, that's the lemongrass is what they drink in, even in India on hot days. Coriander, cardamom, which we saw earlier. And there is caffeine in there, green tea, elethra, which is a type of adaptogen, ginseng called Siberian ginseng, and a little brahmi, which is cooling and good for the mind. Wonderful tea, very sweet, very cooling. And so you can be drinking this um, anytime during the day, cold, and right out of the fridge, and you got your energy. So I'll have this in the morning, get me going, cool me down, very effective. So um, I wanted to show you those because obviously herbs ha are very effective too, but uh, and much quicker. But first thing you have to do is change the diet. So once again, more sweet, cooling uh, foods and astringent foods. That means a little bit more beans and legumes and less dark meat. Dark meat is heavy. Red meat is more heavy, more heating. Uh, you want to have, and also no alcohol, no coffee. You want to do more green tea uh, because those are also heating and aggravating. And so, and so again, no hot, not too salty, not too sour. And uh, otherwise, you can have burning sensation, inflammation. For example, if you get if you get too hot and angry, uh, Herb Mantis has this formula called 
it's an Ayurvedic formula, traditional Ayurvedic formula. Called, we call it cool head formula. And this is for uh, irritability, frustration, anger, rage, hypercriticism. Promotes mental clarity and peace of mind and calms your whole head down. It's actually a very cooling formula. It, Taruni is actually rose petals. So it's got rose petals and Guduchi Sattva, which is extremely cooling, and Mukti Pishti, which is the powder of pearls. Very cooling, very effective. People are very surprised on how fast cool head can take away your anger. We have many people who have to order a couple packs a month just to get through life. So I'm just showing you at the same time, you know, you got to change your diet and you still may need some herbs. For example, if you get burning sensation in the urine, you're not, you don't have a urinary tract infection, but you just get a burning sensation in the urine. So we have this formula, oh, kidney, kidney formula. Uh, it's not on Ermanti's site, not all. And you can see the pitta there. See, pitta means it's higher. This is urinary burning and urgencies. And uh, it also leads to nocturnal urination. And a very cool herb that is used is sandalwood. Sandalwood is cooling. You know, so this is taken for burning urination. So if you, and, and in the summertime, we're going to sell a lot more of this. I can go all winter and nobody calls and says they have burning urination. <laughs> but summer, we will sell plenty of it. And same with the cool head. Only really angry people, hot-headed people call us during the winter time with hot head and anger and burning around the eyes, bloodshot eyes. But in the summertime, we will get a lot of people with this problem. Same for your colon. If your colon gets too hot, too inflamed, then you can get loose stools. So again, you see another formula. This one is on Herb Mantis, and it's basically for loose stools. See, it's for inflammation in the colon and loose stools. Um, and it's, of course, got, there's the fennel seed, which I mentioned. I think all the other herbs you wouldn't know, but you do see there's fennel in there and some licorice root. All cooling, sweet, soothing, anti-inflammatory herbs and to help to firm up the bowels and get rid of that burning, kind of like a pre-IBS condition. Oh, we get a lot more IBS and irritable bowel conditions during the summer. One of my personal favorites, we don't sell it, is a rose jam. Right there, rose jam. I think you can get it online. Honey rose jam, rose petals and honey. Oh my gosh. It's so sweet and so cooling. We use it for headaches, irritability, anger, uh, and it's very delicious on a hot day. So drinking coconut water, uh, having uh, mango juice, more liquids in the diet, more ghee, a little bit more fat, not so heavy meals, a little more legumes, not too much red meat, you know, more lighter meats, lighter fish, like tilapia. And uh, lighter meats like uh, turkey and uh, uh, white chicken meat. These are all lighter, not as dark, uh, and they will help. And, of course, there's many. You could do some juicing of coconut, coconut water. You could do juicing with uh, cucumber water. Foods, vegetables that are good are almost all the leafy greens, and asparagus, green beans, um, all good. All the sweet fruits are good, not the sour fruits. A few home remedies to wind it up, cotton clothes, no polyester clothes. You're just going to be wearing a bag and it's going to make you sweaty. Uh, swimming is one of the best, of course, in the summer months. You know, we all love to go swimming in the summer when it's hot and that's the best exercise. So you, you want to avoid excess exertion, excess exercise, particularly in the heat of the day. You want to either go early in the morning or later in the evening when the temperature is a little cooler and even better if you want to take a little rest in the afternoon uh, to cool down a little bit that would be also a good idea so again i want to remind you taking these actions can help you avoid health issues during the summer you need this is a preventive method preventive like i have many clients and they're very pitta they're red angry, hot, driven people with inflammation and muscle pain with easy to get heartburn and acidity. Well, they've been getting it their whole lives. 
but only when they learn what I just taught you can they manage it. Not only do they have to, you know, be careful with hot, sour, and spicy foods uh, and salty foods, but in the summertime, they have to be really on guard and have more sweet, cooling foods. You know, it's not just all about what vitamins are in the food. That's that kind of sends people astray. You know, they get confused just looking at the vitamins and the nutrients. No, that's a, a very limited view of your foods, just looking at the vitamins. These are the actions, the effects of these foods on your body. So it doesn't matter how many vitamins it has. If it creates a health issue, it's not suitable for you. It could be very suitable for somebody else, but if it's creating heartburn, acidity, you know, uh, for you or loose stools, then it's not suitable for you. We need to listen to our body, not just, you know, follow what people are always telling us to do. But I hope that helps you learn how to keep balanced during the summer months. Now, if you go to my website, Kabir's Clinic, K H A B I R S clinic.com right on the home page i have links to three articles right now on the summer one is called dietary guidelines for the summer and uh, another one is called how to balance your pitta dosha in the summer and another one is like lifestyle habits in the summer three articles and even if you're not in the winter those are still on my website under seasonal articles but right now i have them right on the home page of my website so easy to find. I really recommend you read those, particularly if you're a person that gets these conditions, uh, like I've mentioned a few times. Then you really want to be careful. Don't wait until you get the health issue. Don't wait until you have the pain. Don't wait until you have the burning eyes, the burning headache, the red skin, the anger, the loose stools, the burning urine. Don't wait until all this comes. Start taking the action now so you can avoid it this summer. All right. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I wish you the best of health and happiness, and I hope that you stay cool and calm all summer long. God bless you all.